The controversy regarding the BBC presenter overpaying for sexually explicit images has taken the British media by storm. The presenter who is at the centre of this controversy has now been named. The name of the now suspended BBC presenter is Hugh Edwards. His name was revealed by his wife. She revealed his name shortly after the Metropolitan Police said that there is no evidence to support the allegations against him. To discuss this today, we have with us Peter Klepp, Editor-in-Chief of Brussels Report. So thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. As I mentioned, Hugh Edwards has been named as the BBC presenter, suspended over the allegations that he paid for explicit images. What is your take on this case to begin with? Well, as always, um, uh, we have to await the, uh, the investigation. Uh, there, is in, there are indeed very serious um, uh, allegations and uh, there's been a lot of speculation. There has been um, arrangements whereby uh, British media were forbidden to report on it um, at, the, um, at the risk of having to pay massive uh, fines. Uh, so, um, yeah, as always, it's, I think it's very tricky to, to make any grand statements about this. What we know, though, is that in the past, there's been a culture of cover-up uh, in the BBC with the, the Jimmy Savile uh, case. And, and, of course, many people are once again reminded about this. Uh, right, sir, you said that the British media are not speaking about this. Could you elaborate on that further? Well... Basically, uh, there was um, uh, an injunction or a special um, legal uh, measure which uh, forbid it, um, which, which, banned from, which banned journalists from uh, citing any names uh, at the risk of having to pay massive fines. This is, of course, to protect, um, you know, it, potentially innocent people. You don't want to uh, have a situation where people are being named and slandered uh, in this context. Uh, because um, it may harm them for the rest of their uh, of their lives, so I think it's only normal that uh, courts are um, are quite vigilant in uh, you know preventing these kind of um, um, situations. Uh, that said, as you reported, the wife of the person in question, who is still presumed innocent, um, has now come out and and made her statement. Uh, now, as I mentioned. Um, this, this, I think, also reheats the debate about the BBC. Some people are saying, okay, why are we actually required to pay for this, um, you know, for this TV station, which clearly has not um, uh, everything together, at least that's, that's their argument. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, uh, the British have to pay um, a compulsory fee uh, to, to watch uh, the BBC, even if they never do in practice. Right, sir, absolutely. In fact, I was just going to come to this. Of course, this case has thrown up many questions. It has brought to question what subsequent steps the BBC took after it did receive the complaint, which, as per reports, was back in May. What do you make of this? Well, um, I think also on that issue, um, apart from the question, OK, uh, is there somebody guilty here or not? Um, it's not entirely clear. Uh, we don't have enough information to know if um, the BBC has acted properly. It may well that they acted properly, that they uh, that they were also unaware of any uh, potential mis, uh, misdoings um, and that they have uh, acted as soon as they heard about it. Uh, but again, I think it's it's very tricky to, you know, to make grand statements about this when you don't have all the uh, all the information in hand. Right, absolutely. Now, there are a series of claims and counterclaims, but it has brought to force some very real and serious issues. The issue of predators being allowed to operate in workspaces. What's your take on this, sir? Uh, well, indeed, if uh, all of this uh, turns out to be true, then indeed um, it's, it's sort of questionable that, um, you know, that 17-year-olds that, uh, in this case, uh, people that are minors, uh, are at risk uh, when they when they are um, working in, a, in an environment like this. Uh, so obviously, then uh, they need to um, you know to, to to draw some lessons from that uh, to try to you know uh, take some measures uh, that um, can minimize the risk for for the uh, the people involved. Right. Now, since Edwards was one of the most notable and highly paid staff members of the network, what will be the impact of this case on the network? 
Well, I think um, if indeed it's proven or um, there's some evidence that the BBC may not have um, acted properly or that, uh, as you mentioned, that the, you know, the, the working arrangements for vulnerable people uh, were not uh, sufficient um, in terms of uh, providing their security, then this will, of course, add to calls uh, for people to say, look, why don't we actually need to uh, to pay for this channel, um, you know, maybe people can see the, the value of uh, having to pay for um, certain services that would not necessarily be provided by the market uh, as much, uh, but certainly the whole entertainment part. Um, I mean, in, in this way, the BBC is uh, is engaging in competition with uh, private actors. Uh, so so um, I can imagine people say, look, well, why do I have to pay for this? Why do I have to pay for uh, the British state engaging uh, in competition with um, in, you know, private uh, players. Um, why do we have to pay for it if we never uh, you know, watch uh, any content? Uh, I mean, I think these questions will only come, come back louder. Right. Now, reports suggest that for seven weeks after the original complaint, which was back in May, as I mentioned, a payment of $45,000 was made in June to the said individual by the presenter. Now, this also essentially reflects that there was no action by the BBC. So what can you tell us of how this case was handled and if these allegations are found to be true, would this implicate others at the network as well? Well, now, assuming that this uh, payment actually took place, um, uh, which I think we're, we're not sure, then obviously it does not mean that the BBC is aware of it, you know. Um, um, so, so again, I think um, we have to uh, be really careful here as with um, uh, pointing uh, fingers. Um, if there was any wrongdoing, I can imagine that the, uh, the perpetrator was uh, careful to make sure that um, uh, nobody or, or no, knew knew about it, and, and that his employer did not know about it. Um, and you know, a lot of these things can happen in any work environment. And then the question will be: Were there enough, you know, measures to try to uh, avoid these kind of um, risks? Um, well, I think we'll have to see. Right. Absolutely. And now, again, as per reports, apparently there were threatening messages. And it was verified that they were sent from a phone number belonging to the presenter. What's next in this case? What sort of legal action can we expect, considering the Met Police has already said that there is no evidence that the suspended presenter committed criminal offence? Well, that's, of course, um, I think, a strong element. I think if there was any, um, especially given the sensitivity in the media of this case, if there was any evidence... Um, that the Met Police would have, I, um, I would assume that they would not communicate in this way. So, so I think this only adds to the fact that we, we need to be really careful um, about, um, you know, pointing the finger. Um, and um, I think we really need to wait until maybe more facts emerge. Uh, maybe there will be uh, incriminating evidence. Um, but um, yes, we, we will need to, I, I think we also need to separate this from the debate uh, about the BBC, which people will of course not do. They also see these amount, this points at uh, the fact that some of the uh, stars uh, at the BBC make uh, enormous salaries, uh, often uh, this funded with taxpayers' expenses. Um, and this, this will, of course, reunite the debate about uh, the BEEP, the, about the BBC. Uh, but in itself, that's separate from the criminal investigation. In itself, that's separate from uh, how the BBC uh, has or has not sufficiently been, um, you know, uh, taking measures to avoid these kind of um, things from happening. Right. Now, sir, also just for better understanding of the case here, the report sent social media buzzing, of course. and. Everyone was speculating as to who the accused could be. This also pushed leading BBC broadcasters like Jeremy Vine, Nikki Campbell to come forth and say that they were not involved in this scandal. Do you think that is what triggered Edward's wife to finally name that he was the one who was in fact suspended over these allegations? It, it certainly looks so. Um, I think the wife uh, realized that uh, this was uh, going to end up in some nasty witch hunt. Um, and, and that's, of course, uh, yeah, that, 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 that would be terrible. So, so I, I would think that she did, uh, she did the right um, thing. 
to to come out uh, with this information um, while indeed stressing that uh, the Met Police, as you mentioned, uh, has so far not found any uh, incriminating evidence. Right. Now, that being said, the BBC says that it will continue with its internal investigation. For better understanding here, could you tell us what that would entail? Uh, well, I'm sure that anything they have, they will hand over now to the uh, judicial authorities and the police. Um, on top of that, um, yeah, I think uh, they, they'll, uh, they'll look into um, whoever has worked uh, with the person in question. Um, I'm sure they'll look into the, the emails um, and, yeah, what more can they do? All right. Well, uh, Mr. Peter Klepp, thank you so much for joining us with your insights on this. Thank you.